They were murderers, every one of them. Murderers that get out of prison will do it again. Kyle and Tyree were friends. Preston Chavers wasn't as close with the guys, but they were all young students here in Fort Walton Beach. They were gonna go ahead and set up a, a buy for some weed and commit a robbery. Figuring out who was involved was not that big of a feat. Trying to figure out who pulled the trigger was a little bit more difficult. Tyree Washington called Pitcock to set up the deal. Then Walling went into the house and got the gun that he'd stolen from his own grandfather. He handed that gun to Chavers, and Christopher Pitcock was lured to a place where they could rob him. A scuffle broke out. Somebody tried to reach in and grab the dope. Pitcock fought back. Timothy Chavers, he just started firing the weapon. One shot hit Christopher, and it was a fatal shot. Preston was found to be the person who pulled the trigger. Walling and Washington were charged with principles to murder, connected with a felony murder. The law reads, if someone dies in the commission of some other felony that you were you know, committing, then you can be accountable for that murder. So Walling, Washington, and Chavers, they all were charged with murder. The sentence was, was mandatory. It was life without the possibility of parole. A few years ago, the US Supreme Court determined that juveniles cannot be sentenced to a mandatory life imprisonment. We now have to have this new sentencing hearing. These boys were sentenced, so that was a closure for anybody now you just opened it all back up. It's torture. Preston Schaefer's, you killed my boy. What are you going to say to me? What happened that night was a tragedy. The Supreme Court want us to look in how the development of the person who committed the crime affected that crime. Preston has suffered trauma. That trauma affected his ability to control his impulses. That should be a determination in what the court sentences him to. And I was on a bus stop one day, and a kid talked with my mama. When I got up to confront him, and that's when I caught my first charge. He's being placed in these institutions full of violence, so he had to fight. He's learning social skills in a detention facility, and he's all of a sudden now 11, 12 years old. And at one point, uh, Preston ended up going to the Dozier School. Preston told me there was a hook on the floor, and they would take your handcuffs, and they would chain you to the floor, and you would sit there all day long. The discipline techniques that were used there were so intense that kids actually died. That was a very violent place. And growing up in an environment like that, you get almost hardwired a certain way. So, you know, when I get out when I'm 15, I don't know how to handle situations like other kids know how to handle situations. I wasn't an all, all around bad kid. I was still friendly. I was still very social. I was still very kind. But if somebody came at me, I, I would get violent. I can't pull my son out of the grave. When you cry every day for nine years, man, it just, it just takes a toll on you. Before I leave this world, I would like to see them have to stay you know, at the same sentence they have, you know, putting you in prison for the rest of your days and letting you feel the pain that, of what you've caused. I promised my son that daddy will avenge you. I'll fight till the day I die. I don't hold it against people for not wanting to give forgiveness. But I feel remorse. I think about him. I think about his family. I think about everybody involved and uh, all the lives that were shattered. It's this uh, never out of my mind. I can't change anything that's happened in the past, but I can take steps to better myself while I'm here.
the court has considered the testimony from the trial in the hearing today. The jury in this case found the defendant did discharge a firearm causing death. The defendant voluntarily and with enthusiasm participated in the planning of the robbery over a period of hours before the robbery was executed, which led to the death of Christopher Pitcock. The defendant thus had to pull the trigger four times to fire the shots which killed the victim. The conduct of the defendant before, during, and after the robbery and death demonstrates a level of maturity and rational, though criminal, thought process. Therefore, the court does adjudicate you, Timothy Preston Chambers, guilty of the first degree murder of Christopher Pitcock by carrying a firearm and discharging a firearm causing death. The court sentences you, Timothy Preston Chambers, to life for the murder of Christopher Pitcock. This is the sentence and judgment of the court. I was hoping for maybe 25, 20 years, just to be able to have another chance at life, another chance with my family. You know, another chance to uh, be something, right all my wrongs. You know, that's what I was expecting. But life again, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs>